get somebody to turn this fog machine off. It's very distracting. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you, Lord God, for these, your precious sheep. I thank you that revelation knowledge flows freely, uninterrupted, and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. Think through my mind, speak through my vocal cords. None of me, all of you. I declare every heart anointed to receive and every ear anointed to hear. In Jesus' name I pray. All that agree said, amen. I want to talk to you guys today about the difference between lust and love. I'm going to be talking about this for the next two months. But I need you guys to see it because I feel like we live in a day and time where anything that is looked at, thank you. Anything, give me a second, let me just dust this off real quick. Get this all wiped down. That's what we do. Y'all can deal with it, right? Y'all good? Y'all ain't, y'all, y'all ain't tripping? I know it's, y'all room probably look a little dirty too, huh? All cap. All cap. It's all good as my team gets everything together. I feel like we live in a day and time where everything God creates, the enemy wants to pervert. Sometimes we can view lust and love as if they're synonymous or as if they're the same. Clap one time if that makes sense. So, Love sounds like, oh my God, you're beautiful. Lust sounds like, oh my God, you're beautiful. You did? Love sounds like, um, you're the prettiest girl in the room. Lust sounds like, you're the prettiest girl in the room. But when it comes down to it, it's like, you know what? I'll stop doing this one thing that I know I need to stop doing for you. Uh Uh-oh, that's not love. That's not uh, lust. Lust isn't going to sacrifice anything for you. That's the difference. But the enemy comes in and he tries to make love and lust be on the same playing field. So what happens is a lot of young people get caught up in this thing that they think is love, but it's really lust. So today and for the next few months, I'm going to just expose a lot of these things. I'm gonna bring a lot of enlightenment to you concerning the differences between lust and love because if you're not careful, you'll feel like you're in love, you'll really be in lust and waste a whole lot of time with the wrong person, a whole lot of heartache, a whole lot of heartbreak, and it could have all been avoided. Does that make sense? Let's go into it. We live in a time where lust is viewed as love, where disrespect is viewed as keeping it real, where violence is viewed as strength, and is even glorified. Why is it? I believe that the further the created gets from the creator, the more perverted it becomes. Clap one time if that makes sense. Think about it. If I had a plant up here and I took that plant out of the root, or if I took it and I grabbed it by the roots and took it out of the plant, I mean out of the soil, and I took it over here and just sat it down, what would that plant begin the process of doing? Why? Because what? It's not in the soil anymore, but what does the soil provide for those roots? Nutrients, nutrition, protection, right? Um, uh, It it creates an environment for growth, not an environment for failure. Clap one time if that makes sense. So the further you get from your creator, How do I get far from my creator? You can get caught up in distractions. What are things that distract you? All types of things can distract you. Unnecessary relationships, video games, food. I mean, the the list goes on and on. But the enemy's design and his purpose and his way of trying to get your attention is by distracting you. Now, I said this before, anybody Anytime you find yourself being distracted, always check your pockets. Because anytime you find yourself being distracted, something is trying to be taken from you. Back one time if that makes sense. I need you guys to be mindful of this because if you're not, you'll find yourself falling for the okie doke over and over and over and over and over again. And that's not what's up. 
Clap one time if you love Jesus. Make some noise if you love Jesus. So when it comes to Jesus, you need him in every intricate detail of your life. Because it's only him that's going to be able to keep you from going through all of these heartaches and experiencing, like, and, and experiencing them like you do. It's not that those temptations to get angry, those temptations to get your heart broken, those temptations to fall in depression won't come. But you need Jesus in order to roll through it. You need Jesus in order to push through it. Without him, we're nothing. Without him, we're just like that plant that's been pulled out of the soil. Clap one time if that makes sense. The further the creative gets from the creator, the more it's susceptible to danger, the more it's susceptible to trauma, the more it's susceptible to hurt, the more it's susceptible to depression. Clap one time if that makes sense. So I want to give you some definitions. Let's define this thing because you know how I am. I like to build on a solid foundation, right? So this foundation, John 15 and 13, this is going to show you the definition of love from Jesus's point of view. John 15, 13, New King James Version. It says, no greater love, greater love has no one than this, than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. Now, he was talking to his disciples in that scripture, and he was letting them know, hey, listen, there's no greater love than what I'm about to do for you. But when it comes to us, he's not talking about just laying down your life and I got to kill or I got to die for my friend. But sometimes it's dying to self. What are you willing to do? What are you willing to sacrifice for the next man, for the next person, for the next friend? What are you willing to do? Some of you sacrificed your time to be here today. That's, that's you know, dying to self. I could have been at home playing video games. I could have been in my bed sleep. And you know how teenagers love their sleep, right? Clap one time if that makes sense. Yes, sir. But you're here today, and I appreciate you for being here today. But I need you to know that greater love has no one than this than to lay down one's life for his friends. What are you willing to do for the next person? How many times have we looked on TikTok or we looked on Instagram and we see that person, they run in that race and they fall down right there across the finish line and the person comes back and they try to help them up. What are you willing to do? Are you willing to sacrifice winning so that the other person can win? Are you willing to uh, sacrifice, uh, you know, uh, your new pair of shoes at the, so that the other person can get a new pair of shoes because you got plenty at home? What are you willing to do? What will it cost you? Because true love is always going to cost something. But when it comes to lust, oh no, 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 no. Lust is all about self. Lust is all about, I'm not going to, I ain't trying to, I don't care nothing about what you got going on. Unless it benefits me, I'm good. So that's God's definition. That's Jesus' definition for love. Now, I want to give you a different definition. This is how a harlot, everybody say harlot. Who knows what a harlot is? <laughs> yes. Okay. Who, who said that? <laughs> we used to have an acronym for it. What was it? What? Who said it? I heard it. Who said it? Thought. Right. So, this is the definition of love from a, a thought. Y'all ready? Proverbs 7, 16, 27, amplified version. This is a perverted definition of love from a harlot. It says, I have spread my couch with rugs and cushions of tapestry, with striped sheets of fine linen of Egypt. Keep going. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh aloes and cinnamon now let's dissect this thing the first thing she said go back the first thing she said i have spread my couch with rugs and cushions of tapestry right what does that what what part of the five senses that, that does that appease touch so 
it's like when you come in, you look in, you see the tapestries, right? Oh, man, that look comfy. It's like, what, 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 what do young people say? It's a what? It's a vibe in here. Nice. Okay. So you go in, you lay down. It's comfortable. Not just any type of linen, Egyptian linen. This is top of the top type linen. Keep going. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. What senses is it, is it approaching? Smell good. So, fellas, before they leave the house, most of them put on what? Huh? Now, it ain't that you lustful. You just want to what? All right. But this is her definition. And cinnamon. Keep going. Come. Let us take our fill of love until morning. Right? Let us take our fill of love until morning. Let us console and delight ourselves with what? With what? With what? With love. It sounds good if they what? If they what? Huh? If they married. If they married, it sounds good. Keep going. Watch this. It gets deeper. For the man is not at home. He has gone on a long journey. He has taken a bag of money with him and will come home at the day appointed at the full moon. With much justifying and enticing argument, she persuades him with the, what? Allumments. I like it better when it's, what the what? Allurements. Yeah, the small version hit a little different, chit chat. We might want to, you know. Uh, with the allurements of her lips, she leads him. Now, when you hear allurements, for those that don't know what that means, let's use the context clues. What's the root word in allurements? Allure. And what does allure mean? Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Right? It's trying to get you to, come here. I want you. Let's do this. My husband's gone. Right? She's about to do what? She's about to commit adultery. What is that also known as? What is she about to do? She's about to cheat on her mans. You understand? It's a whole married woman about to cheat. But one of the things how she described what she's doing, she called it what? Love. And essentially that's what's happening today. We call lust love because it appeases our five senses. We like what we see. We like what we hear. We like what we, what we smell. We like what we, what we touch. We like how you look. We like the way you walk, the way you talk. And you get so caught up in these things that you miss a whole, you miss a whole person. Because you're more than what we see with our natural eyes. Let's keep going. With much justifying and enticing arguments, the, uh, she persuades him with the allurements of her lips, she leads him to overcome his conscience and his fears and forces him along. Keep going. Suddenly, he yields. What does yield mean? I got you. Let's do it. Suddenly, he yields and follows her reluctantly. What does reluctantly mean? He don't really want to go. He's like, I don't really want to go. But he goes. Why? Because she fine. And she making it real easy. And I don't want this because in the back of my head, you married. You got a whole man. And this ain't right. And, and I, well, Lord, well, Lord, if this, if this ain't for me, just make a drop. Just make a pass out right now and I'll leave. She ain't passed out. I'm still going. You, you understand what I'm saying? We, start, we try to do things like that to, to make ourselves feel better or to make, you know, the word fit our lives instead of our lives fitting the word. Clap one time if that makes sense. Sometimes when you're in, under the pressure of lust and you're under the pressure of being enticed, we have a tendency to, uh, we have a tendency to, reason. We want to reason with the word of God. Well, Lord, well, maybe, maybe just this one time, maybe, you know, well, we're not going to go all the way. We're just going to. We're just going to hold hands or we're just going to, you know, when you're in the movie theater and you just. <sighs> right. Or you're in the movie theater and you just. You're watching the movie, you're watching the movie, but you ain't thinking about the movie. What you thinking about? 
Fellas, you in a movie, you watching a movie? Do my breath stink? I know I just had some popcorn. After about 40 minutes, if I ain't ate nothing, my breath starts stinking. I need a mint. Let me pop them. All right. All right. I wonder if she feeling me. I wonder if she feeling me. Put my hand on her thigh. Oh, she ain't moving. She ain't moving. Okay, I'm going to keep it right here. You look lame in the mud. You just got your hand right there and you ain't going to move nothing. You ain't going to do nothing with it. That looks so lame. She probably thinking, he's so lame. Right? You're going through all of this stuff in your head. You got all of these things going on. You're overthinking everything. And the whole time you're being enticed and allured away. And she ain't even doing nothing nowadays. You're so consumed with what you see on social media, with what you see when you go out here into the world. Or You know where most young people learn about things when it comes to, well, this is senior high, right? Is this senior high or what? You know where young people get most of their stuff from when it comes to sex? Who said, huh? <laughs> What's the craziest place in high school? The locker room. It's the craziest place in middle school. You know what's even crazier than that? The bathroom. It'd be a lot of craziness that go on in that bathroom. Here it is. You up in there. I literally just have to go and I have to what? Use the restroom, right? You go in there and use the restroom. It's between classes. You're not the only one, are you? What goes on in the restroom? Y'all tell me. Huh? Slap boxing. All right. Come, come show me what slap boxing look like. Come show me. Two of y'all. Come on, Mike. Come on, Peyton. Come on. Come on, Mike. Show me. Show me slap boxing. Show Come on, Jonathan. Come on, Jonathan. Come on. Y'all show me. Y'all show me slap boxing. Somebody slap box Peyton. Show me what's going on in the locker room, in the bathrooms. Yeah. Jump on stage. Come on. Come on. Hurry up. Hurry up. Hurry up. Don't hit for real. They in the bathroom. Ain't nobody peeing. And you definitely ain't boo-booing. If you're going to boo-boo, you're going to ask the teacher when everybody else is in class, ma'am, I really need to use the bathroom so you can have some what? So you can have some what? Some peace and quiet. If I'm going to do this, I need to do this with some privacy. You understand what I'm talking about? Right? So you got all that going on. They in the bathroom. They slap boxing. You could be in the bathroom using the bathroom because you can't hold it because you got one of those teachers that say, uh-uh, wait till the class is almost over. How many of you got one of them teachers? And then you really got to use it. You go in there in one of the stalls, and then all of a sudden, somebody hops over and they look at you. Raise your hand if that has ever happened to you. Y'all scared to raise your hand. I know this is what's happening. I know what's happening in there. You got dudes in these bathrooms flashing themselves. You got girls who, you got girls who like girls. You got girls who like boys. You got girls who like both. You got guys who like guys. You got guys who like girls. You got guys who like both. It's so confusing because the enemy has tried to pull you so far away from your creator that when you're in school, it's almost as if you forget your child of God. Listen to me. What I'm teaching you today is very relevant when we think about King David, right? Before he was King David, he was a teenager. And when he was a teenager, he's known for doing what? Huh? Who he put to sleep? Who he put to sleep? Do you know who put him to sleep? Bathsheba. You dig? I hope you're picking up what I'm putting down. David was a mighty man. Huh? He was skilled at fighting. He was skilled at ruling. Killed the lion. Killed the bear. Right? Got all of these accolades and all of these riches and all of this land and all of this authority and namesake known throughout the land. And another man's wife took him out. His lust, the enticing, the allurement of it. You trying to tell me you got enough sense when well, you got 10,000 soldiers over there, you got 8,000 soldiers with you, 
And throughout all of that, you got enough sense to say, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Or in other words, he was saying, who is this person that has no relationship with my God? Y'all scared? I'll fight them. And then they go, okay, well, here's a sword. No, I don't need that. Give me these stones. Give me this slingshot. What? You want to take this shield? I don't need it. He knew he was just going to be on the offense. He went out there and slayed that giant and freed thousands of people from having to die that day in the war. He had enough sense to do that. But we're talking about something called lust that brought him to his knees. I'm going to show you some scriptures and show you how it went down not only from him, but it went down into his children as well. Are you with me? You need Jesus. You need Jesus to be able to withstand Bathsheba or to be able to withstand the lust of the world and the lust of the flesh. I need, Lord, I need you. I can't do this without you. I can't believe in you without you. I need you in every, every shape, form, and fashion. Lord, I need you. Help me. Help me. I need your strength. Because you say when, when I'm weak, you're strong, and, 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 and no weapon formed against me shall prosper, and every tongue that rises up against me shall be condemned, but I can only do that through and by you. So, Lord, I need you. I invoke you. I consider you in every intricate detail of my life. I have these natural feelings in my body because man is a, man is a, you possess a, and you live in a. So when you get saved, what part of you got saved? The spirit part of you got saved. The soul part of you remains the same and constantly has to be renewed. Clap one time if that makes sense. The spirit part of you is just like Christ. The spirit part of you is perfect. The spirit part of you is sealed up. But the soul part of you and the body part of you is out here in this world and it's like, okay, what's up? What we got? Who choosing today? I've been in the gym, I've been working out. Arms looking a little different can't walk by a mirror without stopping a little bit. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> Look at him. Uh, uh, who that mean? What up, though? You go to these football games, you go to these basketball games, you go to the mall, you go to school where other people are around. Sometimes it's not peer pressure. Sometimes it's peer what? Presence. It's just the fact that people are around. So someone outside of you gets to look at what you get to look at in the mirror. And hopefully... You accept it, but see, acceptance, just like you were accepted by God, and you remember that feeling of being accepted by him, so the enemy tries to come in and show you a world's way of acceptance. So you get out here, and the girl go, mm. not just, mm, how I do it, mm, with the stank face, because what, mm, what that mean? That could mean a whole lot of stuff, couldn't it? Mm. Mm. What you mean, Ma? <laughs> what you mean? Mm. You look good. Oh, appreciate it, appreciate it, appreciate it. Sometimes y'all say appreciate it before somebody even give you a compliment. Because you know you look good, right? You come in, what up, what, what up, appreciate it, appreciate it. Huh? What you say appreciate it for? Oh, I thought you said I look good. Anyway, uh, what's up, man? We're going, you know, you're just so caught up on the things that you see whole time. The enemy's sitting up there working and he's trying to work you. He's trying to bring all types of thoughts your way. Oh, girl, want you. Or even for the ladies, oh, boy, want you. Huh? He wants you. You're looking good. Your edges, you spent just enough, just enough time getting them crispy and swirling and pointy and, and symmetrically perfect. So they look the same on both sides, right? And he's, he's noticing it. That soul part of you starts to. Ooh, I like the way this feel. Acceptance, approval, allurement, curiosity comes in. I want to see what's going on. I want to see what that's about. Whole time, Holy Spirit inside of you like, be careful. That young man has a spirit that's been trying to follow him all his doggone life. I'm still working on him. He may be the one, but not right now. Young people don't like to hear that word, not right now. Why? Why don't young people like here and not right now? I want to be in the moment. 
I want to do it. I want, I, want, I want to feel this right now. How come, right, how come I got to wait till I get older? How come I got to wait till I'm ready? You never see a fruit on a tree complain about not being ripe yet. Pastor Ant, fruit can't talk. But think about what I'm saying to you. If you take a fruit off of a tree and it's not ripe, when you bite into it, what type of experience do you have? It's bitter. Likewise in life, when you take something and you try to involve yourself in it before it's due season, before it's due time, you get a bitter experience. Well, Pastor Ant, how you know? I had the bitter experience. Four kids, all of them good. My baby just went to the prom. She getting ready to graduate uh, uh, in a few weeks, right? Everything's good. But Pastor Ant, when he was younger, it's like, okay, I got lured away, okay. I wanted to break up with what I thought. I knew I, knew I wanted to be with Constance, but it's like, yeah, I love you, but yeah, yeah, I'll come back to this. I'll be back, and I went out, and I had Junior and Trail. And I had Junior and Trail, and it's like me and his mom was just friends. We weren't even really like that. But you get caught up in a moment, and that moment, see, you don't see the stuff that you can't see. The stuff that you can't see is the enemy's working there. I'm thinking about a good time. I just want to feel good. I want this part to feel good. You see, you got, the, you got flesh. That's this part of your, of your body. This is considered flesh. But then you have uh, the flesh that the Bible talks about. It talks about two types of flesh. There's a flesh like this, my body. But then there's a flesh, which is a way of thinking that goes against God's word. Clap one time if that makes sense. So you have the flesh that comes in and it's trying to pull you. It's trying to allure you. Just like the harlot was trying to pull the man and cheat on her husband. It tries to pull you and you get caught up in flattery. You get caught up in acceptance. You get caught up in, uh, I like this. You get caught up in your feelings. This feels good. And all of a sudden, something that's really lust, you say, I think I love you. When in reality, and this doesn't go for everybody, but in reality, you really lust that person because love will cost you something. Think about it. Most young men don't like the fact that it costs exclusivity when I get with this young lady. Who knows what exclusivity means? Huh? Who said that? What did he say? One on one. One on one. Which means I ain't looking at no other girls. I'm not entertaining no other girls. Watch this. Not just when I'm around you, but when I'm with my homies, I'm at the mall, I'm at the movies. I'm locked in. I'm solid. It's all about you. That's going to cost you something. Because that requires a level of what? Maturity. And if you don't have that maturity to be able to do that and pay that cost, what's the cost? Exclusivity. You're it. You're the one. You're the one I want. You're the one. You're still the girl I run to. The only one I... Right. You're the one I want. You're the one I need. I'm not looking at nobody else. I ain't studying nobody else. And then you have the situations where you've done that, but the girl ain't on that time. Fellas, clap one time if that makes sense. Where did all this stuff start? It's just not the bathrooms and the locker rooms at school. But these feelings, the enemy tries to jump on you early, real early. Hey, mom, can I spend the night over? How many of you had those type of parents that said, no, nah, you ain't doing no sleepover. We don't do sleepovers. Raise your hand if you had to say, okay. You want to know why? Because we went to the sleepovers. That's why we ain't letting you go to the sleepovers. We know what happens at the sleepovers. Yeah, look at that. It's innocent. Come on. It's just, oh, let's play. Okay, what are you doing? What are you doing? Stop. Don't touch right there. It starts off innocent. It starts off pure. Just curiosity, which is a good thing. Natural curiosity. Whole time the enemy's playing with you. But you're too young. This is why your parents need to be involved when you're this age. Go back to that picture. 
This is why your parents need to be involved when you're this age, because with this, you got an innocent young man, innocent young lady, and they're just sitting there. They have mommy and daddy in the house, and they see mommy and daddy show affection towards each other. So they innocently, oh, you want to play what? I ain't heard. What, what is it, Angel? They play doctor? How does that work? <laughs> Jesus Christ. They don't just play house no more, so now they play doctor, right? Oh, my goodness. I'm thinking about it now. I'm like, whoa, whoa. So imagine these young kids, they got to be what, four, five, six, five, six years old, between five and six years old, cousins. Cousins. It's going to get real quiet in here because I'm getting in a lot of y'all's business, but the business that I'm getting in is locked away in a booth in the back in the corner in a safe and we don't talk about it. My job is to expose it today in Jesus' name. There's nothing wrong with you. The enemy's been trying to get after you like, he's always, like he always has. Clap one time if that makes sense. So things happen. The enemy is no respecter of person or age. Understand that. Okay? He's not a respecter of person or age. There's natural things about this. Man is a spirit. You possess a soul. You live in a physical body. And your physical body, uh, when, when certain things stimulate you, certain things react. Clap one time if that makes sense. But when you're young, you don't know what to do with that. But it happens when you're young, does it not? And the enemy wants to play off of that. He wants to get in and he wants to try. What happens when, 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 when the creator gets away from the creator? What happens? It perverts. And he wants to get you so far away, so far not mindful. I'm not thinking about the fact that Christ is in me and I've accepted Christ as my Lord and personal Savior. I'm not thinking about that fact. The only thing I'm thinking about is the fact that what I see, what I hear, what I feel, what I touch. Clap one time if that makes sense. <clears throat> Galatians 5, 19 through 25 in the New Living Translation. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature... What is the desires of your sinful nature? I said, when you accept Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, what part of you gets saved? What part? So what part of you still needs work? Your body and soul. So there's natural desires that your soul and your body want. Clap one time if that makes sense. When you follow the desire of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. What are they? Sexual immorality, impurity, Lustful pleasures, keep going, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling. What's quarreling? Fighting, yeah. Jealousy, outburst of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. Let me tell you again as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. Keep going. Keep going. Okay. 22? 20, we don't have 22? Give me a sign, give me a signal. All I see is Aaron and, and Lyle. We good? Okay. But the Holy Spirit produces the kind of fruit in our lives. What's the word? What's the first word? Go, go, go back. Go back. Envy and drunkenness, wild parties, and other signs like these. Let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now go to the next verse. But, what does but do? But the Holy Spirit produces the kind of fruit in our lives, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Somebody say self-control. Somebody say self-control. 
and self-control. There is no law against these things. Keep going. 24. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to his cross and crucified them there. 25. Since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. In what part? In what part? Does that mean when it comes to boyfriend and girlfriend? Does that mean when we just talking? Does that mean when we just choosing? Does that mean when we at home and our parents give us chores to do? Does that mean when we doing our homework? Does that mean when we're eating? Does that mean when we're sleeping? It means every part of your life you need Christ. I need you to get this. Because somehow, some way, the enemy has convinced a lot of believers that Christ is lame. Make some noise if you love Jesus in this building today. What is lust? It's an intense appetite of something. It's an ignition that turns on so many destructive things. This word is commonly used in terms of sexual sin, which is correct. However, it also applies to anything we, uh, anything we begin to desire with intensity to the point where it drives us to act out in ways that go against God's word. Which means you don't just, you, lust isn't just about uh, you know, sex. You could lust after candy, pie, ice cream. You could lust after uh, 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 video games. Now, here's the thing. Who knows the difference between lust and addiction? Come on, Trinity. There's a mic right there. What's the difference between lust Right? And addiction. Um, lust is something that you desire, and it's just like a crazy feeling. Addiction is something you have to have, and you need to have it now, and you just keep, keep going, keep going, keep going. Okay, very good. Here, here's what I'll say to you. Addiction is the byproduct of lust. Clap one time if that makes sense. Does it really make sense? Do you get that? You become addicted. It starts off, lust is the, is the gateway. It opens the door, right? But then it gets to a point where it's like, now I'm addicted to this thing. How many have ever seen somebody that's addicted to something? It's not pretty. It's not pretty. You got people who are addicted to video games. You got people who are addicted to, uh, and this is crazy, but it's, it's, it's real, cutting themselves. You have people that are addicted to drugs. And then that, that goes even deeper because it not only messes with your soul part, but it messes with your body part too. Clap one time if it makes sense. You got dopamine. There's this chemical in your body called dopamine. It's a pleasure chemical that's in your body, right? And when it's aroused, when you do drugs, it over arouses so your body doesn't know when, okay, this is the best way I can explain it. When someone gives you a compliment, Dopamine is released. Clap one time if that makes sense. When you do drugs, dopamine is released. Clap one time if that makes sense. When you do drugs, however, and dopamine is released, it doesn't know whether it's your body isn't that smart where it can tell the difference between a compliment and something that you're taking to overstimulate it. Clap one time if that makes sense. So what happens is, your dopamine levels become so doggone exposed and expressed that you do anything to get back to that feeling that you had when you took that drug. Clap one time if that makes sense. The catch is you'll never get that feeling. So the addiction part looks like you constantly trying to go back to that first feeling that you got that you can never get back. You'll get something like it. But what happens is over time, your body adapts and then the drugs don't even do it. So you go from one drug to another, from that drug to another, from that drug to another. Before you know it, all your teeth done fell out and you walk around here five pounds. I got family members 
<laughs> he laughing. I got family members like that. And it's sad because smart in school, intelligent, articulate, right? Just couldn't kick that habit. Just couldn't kick that addiction that started off just a lustful thing. And here's the thing. That lustful thing became about what usually sends people towards drugs and different things like that. Trauma. That's something most people have in common. And it's sad. But most of us can identify with each other by way of trauma. Oh, your daddy ain't in your life neither? Uh-uh. He left. Oh, your mom and daddy got divorced too? Yup. Yeah. Real by me too, by what's up, by oh my mama, boy, that junk crazy, ain't it? For real, a twin. What? There's other things. <laughs> Let's move on. Let's move on. I could be there all day. The biblical definition of temptation, a situation in which one experience a challenge experiences a challenge to choose between fidelity and infidelity to one's obligations towards God. A situation in which one experiences a challenge to choose between fidelity and infidelity to one's obligations towards God. What does that mean? Who can explain it to me? What is fidelity and infidelity? Uh, fidelity is like, fidelity is like being locked in basically. Yeah, I like it's that. It's being, um, faithful to your partner come on and infidelity is like cheating basically Facts. and not being not being locked in facts that's the best way i know how to explain it that, being that's locked a good in and not being locked in right so it's a situation in which one experiences a challenge to choose between fidelity and infidelity to one's obligations towards god what does god say god say sex is for what huh Husband and wife is for marriage. But everything about this world says, bro, you got to try it before you buy it, bro. Bro, you only live once. That's the biggest bunch of crock I've ever heard, ever, ever heard before in my life. You don't only live once. I wake up every day. You only die once. Clap one time if that makes sense. You only live once. The enemy still trying to do the same thing he tried to do in the garden. He tried to make Adam and Eve feel like they were what? Missing out on something. Which is the same thing he tries to do with you. He tries to make you feel like you're missing out on something. And then you get so deep in these relationships, it gets to the point where, you know, uh, uh, a, young, a young man could be dating a young lady and a young lady got issues. Or a young lady could be dating a young man and a young man got issues. Or both of y'all got issues, right? And, and it's like... The young man goes, I can change her. I can, I, I see something in you. I can fix that. All of a sudden, you the Holy Spirit. Where they do that at? On earth. Why they do that? Because I got a good heart and I mean well, but sometimes because of my immaturity, I misappropriate my calling. Sometimes because of immaturity and curiosity, I mismanage my purpose. When you don't understand the purpose for a thing, you'll abuse it. Clap one time if that makes sense. You can't be tempted with what you don't think about. What you mean, Pastor Ann? What that mean? It mean you can't be tempted with what you don't think about. You got to start watching What's going into your eyes? What's going into your ears? What's going into your mouth? Why I got to start watching that? Because if you don't, those things will get down into your heart. And before you know it, you're moving and grooving like somebody. God, did, God didn't create you to be this way. What happened to you? When God came into the garden with Adam and Eve and he said, Adam, where are you? He wasn't looking, talking about his location. He was talking about where are we? We, we not where we was. What's up? We good? Where you at? Because you're not positioned where I put you. You're positioned in a place that can leave you vulnerable and that can eat you up if you're not careful. Tell me you didn't eat of that tree. You understand what I'm saying to you? 
It's dangerous out here, y'all. Y'all think it's just cute. Oh, man, you know she cute, she bad, you know, shorty, you know, it's back there. You know what I'm saying? You know, she lumped up. Or the girls. Oh, he, oh, 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 oh. He dark skin, because you know light skin ain't his style no more. He dark skin. Am I right? Am I right? Huh? What'd you say, Devin? You said we ain't never going outside. Light skin power. I know what I'm talking about. Right? But dark skin went out of style, though, didn't it? <laughs> Go ahead, old man. <laughs> Let's go to James 1:14, 1, 1, 14 through 18 in the NIV. James 1, 14 through 18 in the NIV. It says, but each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. Then, after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. Now, I've taught this all the time. Death in the Bible doesn't always mean a natural death. What does it mean? Separation. I'm separated. Separated from what? Same reason God came in the uh, garden and said, Adam, where are you? Right? It's a positional thing. Then after the desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. What does conceived mean? You got a, you got a, you got a, a part where the baby's born, but then you have a part where the baby's conceived. What does conceived mean? Huh? When it first goes in, this part. So let's read the scripture again. Then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to separation. Keep going. Don't be deceived, my brothers and sisters. That's what he's telling you. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. He chose to give us birth through the word of truth, that we might be kind, that we might be a kind of first fruits, all of all he created. So what he's saying is, no, don't give birth to sin. Don't let that, don't conceive it. It's unconceivable. How many have ever heard that? It's unconceivable. I don't even want to conceive that. Sometimes we conceive the wrong things. And remember, I told you, um, uh, uh, when I use the word influence, what's the word that's hidden in the word influence? Flu. And how do you catch the flu? Do I, can I just, can I just, can you say, oh, I want the flu. How do you, how do you catch the flu? It's not peer pressure, it's peer, it's not peer pressure, it's peer. So sometimes just being around the wrong people, you done caught the flu. Sometimes just being around the wrong people, you done caught this conception. You've conceived something that was never meant for you. Now you out here moving and grooving and shaking and baking with stuff that ain't even, it's like, what are you doing? Who, who are you? I don't even, then you get to your parents. How many have ever heard your parents say, I don't even know who you are anymore. What have you, what, what, what is this? You don't even talk the same. I remember one time, my second eldest came home and he was sounding just like FBG Butter. And I'm like, it's a rapper dude from Chicago. And I'm looking like, why you keep talking like that? Who, 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 who you trying to sound like? I'm like, you sound like King Von and them. You been, what you, what you, what you been watching, G? He's like, what, what, what? It hit different, it hit different. I'm like, okay, okay, okay. The whole swag has changed just from being around or watching something for so long. How many have ever been gone down that rabbit, that wormhole on, on YouTube? You start watching one, and you start watching another, and then it starts leading to this, then the algorithm starts kicking in. Now all of a sudden, you're watching stuff. It was like, man, I started off watching this, now I'm watching this. Now before you know it, three, four hours done went by. going into your eyes. Watch what's going into your ears. Watch this. Watch what's coming out of your mouth. 
That's the important part. Because life and death is in the power of your tongue. So what you allow to come out of it now gives life to a thing. Now we got spiritual principles coming into play. Because regardless of whether you've been thinking spiritually or not, you're still a spirit. <laughs> you dig what I'm saying? You're still a spirit. Man is a spirit. You possess a soul and you live in a physical body. So when you start running your mouth and you start opening up your mouth, giving life or death to a thing. And like I told you, the devil isn't um, omnipresent. He's not omniscient. He doesn't know your thoughts. The only way he know how to attack you is because you talk too much. Somebody say, shut up. Or if you're going to talk, say the right things. What's the right things, Pastor Ant? The Bible says, think on these things that are good, that are pure, that are lovely. I don't want it. Well, that's lame. No, it's not. But sometimes, like I said, when you take things away from, when you take the created away from the creator, it becomes perverted. God is dope. Jesus is amazing. Jesus is essential. Jesus is necessary. I can't be Pastor Ann without him. I can't get up here and teach without him. You can't grow as a teenager without him. You can, but it won't be fruitful. And it'll be very hard. Even in that, he said, I'll send goodness and mercy. And it'll chase after you until it runs you over. Pastor Ant, you believe that? Heck yeah. How you know? Because it happened to me. Huh? I was a runner and a track star running from God. Gone. Yeah, I don't want nothing to do with it. If something was labeled, oh, you can't be no Christian if you do this, I'm doing that. And he chased me down. You know how he chased me down? By way of my wife. The, the crazy part is, it sounds good, but she suffered. Because I was still, ah, ah. I was on drugs, I was, ah. it was a lot, it was a lot. Some of you ain't got to go through all these bad experiences in order to see God. No, he's right there with you, just say, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Say yes to him. He's always talking. God don't talk to me. He's always talking. You just got so much other stuff going on. You can't hear him. Chill, relax. Separate yourself. Isolate yourself from all that yeah, rah, rah, rah stuff. Chill. You feel me? Let's keep going. So lust resides in the heart and it gets there through three gates, your eyes, what you look at, your ears, what you listen to in your mouth, what comes out of it. What we look at, listen to and talk about in abundance will eventually overwhelm and overtake our lives. How many of you ever been around somebody and they're just overly, every time they say something in their jokes, in their normal conversation, it's just highly sexual. How many of you have ever been around that type of person? I'm going to read it again so you can understand. <laughs> what we look at, listen to, and talk about in abundance will eventually overwhelm and overtake our lives. Make sense? Clap one time if that makes sense. I need you to get this. Young people, you've been duped. You've been duped. You've been thinking, oh, man, it's like this, it's like this whole time enemy been back there chewing you up you don't even know it why because he distracts you with feeling good you did all right when we lust for something we allow ourselves to be distracted by that desire it begins with the thought and progresses to a mindset and ultimately takes action when a particular lust is turned on in a person's life, the enemy uses fear to keep it going. Who needs me to read that again? When we lust for something, we allow ourselves to be distracted by that desire. It begins with a thought and progresses to a mindset and ultimately takes action. 
When a particular lust is turned on in a person's life, the enemy uses fear to keep it going. There's this, uh, I was talking about David earlier, right? David, we know him for killing the bear, killing the lion, killing uh, Bathsheba, right? I mean, not killing Bathsheba, I'm sorry. Killing the bear, killing the lion, killing Goliath, falling to Bathsheba. How many of you know? Not only did he fall to Bathsheba, but what did he do to Bathsheba's husband? He what? He got him killed. He murked him. How'd he do it? He set him what? He set him to the front of the battlefield and then pulled all of his support troopers away from him. Ain't that messed up, bro? We're talking about somebody that doggone killed Goliath. Killed Goliath but fell to Bathsheba. What happened? Was she that beautiful? Was she worth all that? So Uriah's wife, Bathsheba, and David, after Uriah was killed, they had children. You want to read a little story about the children? I can't read it all because it's too graphic, but I can tell you where it is, and then you go back and you read it. So you see just how dangerous this lust goes. 2 Samuel 13, 1 through 2, in the Amplified Version. 2 Samuel 13, 1 through 2, in the Amplified Version. Absalom, son of David, had a fair sister. What does fair mean? Huh? Fair. I, I, I'm thinking they're talking about of her skin tone. Had a fair sister whose name was Tamar. What was her name? And Tamar, okay? And Amnon, her what? Her half-brother, son of David. So what we have is, is that they're brother and sister, but they don't have the same what? They don't have the same mother. They have the same, but that don't matter, right? Keep going. Oh, hold on. And Amnon was so troubled. Hold on, go back. Go back to one. David had a fair sister whose name was Tamar, and Amnon, uh, her half-brother, son of David, loved her. Loved her. Somebody say loved her. Okay, keep going. And Amnon was so troubled that he fell sick. For his half sister Tamar. For she was a virgin, and Amnon thought it impossible for him to do anything to her. Somebody say, uh oh. But Amnon had a friend whose name was Jonadab, son of Shemia, David's brother. And Jonadab was very crap, was a very crafty man. He said to Amnon, why are you the king's son so lean and weak, looking from day to day? Why are you so weak looking from day to day? Will you not tell me? And Amnon said to him, I love Tamar, my half, my half brother Absalom's sister. Jonadab said to him, go to bed. And I'll stop right there. I'll take that off. Cut it. You can take it off screen. Take it off screen. Take it off screen. We got to get to a point where it's just touch the button and it go. Unless you explain afterwards. It's a delay, Pastor Ant. Then we'll get showbiz to fix it. Praise the Lord. All right. So go back and read that story. How many of you want the verse? Second Samuel 13, 1 through 2. Just read it all the way through. This lust got so deep. It made his physical body sick to the point where he lost weight. Over who? His sister, bro. You feel me? The devil is not a respecter of person, race, age, none of that. When he come, he going to come. So he'll try to give you things that feel some type of way that you only feel here, but you won't do it here because... Ooh, he like his sister. What's y'all response? You what? 
What else you say? What? Uh, but, bruh, sick, bruh, bruh, belong in a mental institution. Uh, 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 uh. So it becomes a fight that people end up fighting by themselves. I'm not saying everybody goes through that. I am saying if you're not careful, it could lead you there. Absalom and Tamar and all of them, they were just normal people. They were just normal people. Who thought something like that would come and, and try to happen? Read the rest of the story. It gets, it gets, gets a little crazy, but it shows you just how deep lust will go if you don't address it in its conceptual stage. Clap one time if that makes sense. Uh, Kingston, show them the conceptual stage in the womb. This is the conceptual stage. You got to fight it here. You feel me? You got to stop it there. You got to address it there. Okay? And it ain't even got to be on no weird stuff. It could just be on just, man, you know what? I'm too attracted to this. So I've been watching this site a little bit too much and I've been going heavy in it. I've been going crazy in it. You got to stop it here to the point where you have to rebel against that thing. Ooh, I'm watching it. Nope, I ain't going to watch it. I'm going to go for a run. I'm going to go jog. I'm going to go jog. I remember uh, Dr. Dollar shared this story. He was a teenager. Uh, well, he was in college. And uh, he had, you know, become a, a devout Christian, believing in God and different things. And there was this girl and, you know, she was like old girl that I read at the beginning, the harlot that was like alluring and enticing him. He was like, Lord Jesus, I love you. I love you. I love you. He ain't know nothing about no world changes. He ain't know nothing about uh, 2500 Burdett Road or uh, uh, Creflo Dollar Ministry. He ain't know nothing about none of that. All he knew was Jesus. He was in the car and it was about to go down. He said, Aunt, I got out that car and I just took off running. I said, in the middle of it? In the middle of it. He said, well, it wasn't in the middle of it because I ain't let it get there. He said, but it was about to be the middle of it. It was about to be the beginning of the middle of it. Yeah. So nothing happened, but he got up out that car and he took off running in my head because I know the pictures of how he looked where he was like, I was like, that probably was hilarious. But he had to take off running. I'm going to close with this. I want to show you the differences between lust and love in contrast, okay? I wanna show you the difference between love and lust in contrast. You ready? Lust is pleasure focused. Love is person focused. Clap one time if that makes sense. I'm gonna say it again. Lust is pleasure focused. Love is person focused. Number two, lust takes, love gives. Lust will feel like love to those that don't know love. Lust will feel like love to those that don't know love. Who is love? So it's hard to experience love when you don't know God. You feel me? Or you've been so, death has happened, so you're so separated, you're so distant. And anytime you take the created away from the creator, perversion comes in. So it's like, you and Jesus gotta be like this, joint at the hip, he's in me, he's on me, he's around me. You feel me? I can't, I can't be me without him. It's gotta be that serious. It has to be that important. It has to be like breathing. Clap one time if that makes sense. Lust is passion outside of godly morals and parameters. Love is passion within godly morals and parameters. Lust feeds off of bad friends. Love needs good mentors. And then finally, lust makes people sick. Love 
makes people whole. I'm going to say it again. Lust makes people sick. Love makes people whole. What does whole mean? Well, nothing missing, nothing broken. Right? I need you guys to really hang in there with me on this journey as we go through the differences between love and lust because I'm going to be on it for a minute. And I want to show you because there is a way. I'm not trying to say, you don't need to be dating. It's not what I'm saying. I'm saying if you are going to date, there's a way to do it. Chaz, I had sent over a video. I'm not sure if we still got it. I know I sent a lot of stuff and we was doing a lot this week. So if you got it, cool. But Ew, no, no, not that one. Not that one. Not that one. Ew. Not that one. <laughs> not that one. Nah, it's a, uh, I sent it in a power team. It's the uh, one where it was two, they were on Instagram and they were walking. It's like, of course I'm such and such. You know what I'm talking about? If you got it, cool. If not, it's all good. Um, but there's a way to date as a believer. A lot of people be like, you know, they get saved and be like, man, when I was younger, man, before I got saved, man, I, man, they tried to make it seem like life was fun before they got saved. Man, life fun now. What? It just, Pastor Andy, just sound like I can't do nothing. You could do a whole bunch of stuff. How many of you in here got boyfriend and girlfriend? Boom. Boom. You love him? That's your boyfriend? Oh. Uh, lo- let me not say that then, because we... Uh, after all the stuff we, <laughs> she said, ill. I know that's right. Do you love your boyfriend? How long y'all been together? Two months. You love him already? So is it like, and let me make sure I understand. Is it like, like brotherly, godly love? Or is like, no, it's like, I could really rock with him like, I could marry him. Really? So far, so good? Yeah. In two months? It's just, I'm not going to lie, a lot can happen in two months. I'm, I'm not this is lie. true. It's just like, what I just see where his mind is, and we're just compatible, if that makes sense. He loves God? Yeah. What church you go to? It's so, mm-hmm. it's East Point. It's East Point. It's What's East his middle name? First of all, his, name, his middle name is Richmond. That's a last name. If that's his middle name. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> I swear. That's his middle name. <laughs> Richmond, come here. They really like Virginia, I don't they? I him Richmond, too. Do you? Yeah. See, that shows familiarity. That's cute. That's what's up. So two months, y'all compatible. He loves God. Yeah. How often do you talk about God with him? Every day. Every day. We what? pray together. You pray together. Woo! Y'all make some noise for that. Let me show you this video so I can show you how cool it is to be in a relationship as a believer. Put this video up if you got it, Chad. We're waiting for marriage. Of course, people ask us if we're really not having sex. (laughs) We're waiting for marriage. Of course, we haven't made it past the kissing stage yet. (laughs) We're waiting for marriage. Of course, people ask me if I forced him to do this against his will. (laughs) We're waiting for marriage. Of course, people ask why I don't want to take a test drive. We're waiting till marriage. Of course, we're getting married before our three year dating anniversary. <laughs> ah! We're waiting till marriage. Of course, we actually know each other. <laughs> we're waiting till marriage. Of course, people ask how do we go on trips together and not have sex. We, we just, just don't. don't. <laughs> we're waiting till marriage. Of course, people think I'm doing this because she wants to, not because God said to. And period. <laughs> we're waiting till. You feel know what I'm saying? There's ways. There's things you could do. You could go to the movies. You could kick it. Here's the thing. (sighs) Here's the thing. Sometimes we're both not on the same page. Or sometimes your level of maturity could be different from his level of maturity. I'm just going to put you up on game. Can I be real with you? I could be real? Okay, let me be real. Let me be real. (laughs) Trinity crazy. (laughs) You could be real. I used to do this as a teenager. 
don't judge me. It was a long time. It was a long time ago. <sighs> man, you're so fine, man. I got to be careful around you. What you mean you got to be careful around me? I'm just saying, man, you know, you fine, girl. You be, be messing with my flesh, girl. Boy. Right? Cute lips. Boy. I'm going to go get some water. You want some water? Let's go get some water. There you go, there you go, there you go. And you go through about 40 minutes of going back and forth with that. Why are you playing with yourselves like that? What, you, what are you doing? It's about to lead to something. Before you know it, oh my God, I can't believe it. We need to pray together. Oh my God. Y'all sitting there half dressed praying together. Talk about some Lord forgive us. He already done forgave you, but now it's in the conceptual part. Uh, Kingston, you done started this seed. It's in the... You done started something. I ain't talking about a baby just yet, but it leads to that. How many of you right now are ready for a child? Who's, is somebody raising their hand? Who is that back there? Oh, my gosh. <sighs> There's always one. <laughs> really? I'm not, I ain't even going to put you on front street like that. I ain't going to do you like that. Father forgive, him. Father, forgive him for he knows exactly what he does. I'm going to have one of, uh, is that Mike Russell back there? Yeah, put him up on game, Mike. He don't know. He don't know. He think he ready. Right? How old are you, Kenny? 16. 16, and he got a mic already. Lord, have mercy. Help us. <laughs> He's 16. He raised his hand. He said, man, I'm ready for a kid. What make you think you ready for a kid? You're still 16. You're still a kid. Oh, uh, Lord, I'm ready. Why you say that? You don't even know why. You just, is it because you feel like you're ready? Yeah, yeah. How many of you know that it takes more than a feeling? So that means you're ready to get married? Really? Yeah. You got a job? What's your credit score? <laughs> what's, your, what's your credit score, Kenny? Uh, like, uh... Boy, you ain't got no doggone credit score. <laughs> he for to give us one, too. No, I'm, I'm interested to hear. What's your credit score? I don't know. You don't know? How you check your credit score? He don't have the money. Yet. I do got the money though. You got the money though? Yeah. How much money you got? I got like sixty-five dollars. You know what that'll buy you? Two cans of formula. Nowadays, one. I can't believe. Okay, I'm. A, I, we gonna have an off top uh, uh, off of service you know, private conversation. Me, you, and about five other men with kids. This boy said he won't be a father. He ready for marriage with 65 doggone dollars, no credit score. How many bills you got? Zero? Who pay the bills? You, you got your own place? No, nah, my mom pays the bills. Huh? Your mom pays the bills. But like, since my dad just passed, um, we're still thinking about if we can keep his house or not. I got you. I got you. Don't you think you want to get through that part first? Definitely. So would it be safe to say you spoke prematurely about being ready? If sometimes, let me rephrase the question. Is it that you're ready or that you feel like you're ready? I feel like I'm ready. There you go. Okay. And that's honest because most young men around 16, 17, 18, they start, you know, Things start moving a little different, start flowing a little different. We'll talk about that in Lion's Den when the girl's not here. But you know what I'm saying? You start feeling like you're ready. I remember my boys started walking around the house like they were men. And you know every now and then you just got to punch them in the chest. Be like, hey, man, you know I'm the only man in this house, right? Right, Woogie? Yo, Wook. Love you, big dog. He been in the gym. He been working out. He all cut up, walking around. Everything he do is with his shirt off. So then I got to take my shirt off. <laughs> got to show them who the, who the big dog around here. You understand what I'm saying to you? Shoot. No, but seriously, listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. I joke. 
because we just got finished talking about a very serious subject. But if you're out there, and I'm, I'm done with the message, let's, I need you to understand that the only way you can fight those temptations and fight those alluring pressures is with Jesus. You need him. You need him. I don't care what the world says. I don't care how lame the world tries to make the God you serve. He's the king of kings and he's the Lord of lords. Period. I just wanted to jump in. When you were asking a question about them being ready to have a kid and, and Kenny responded, I thought about how much lust drives what you do. So lust is very much, I'm sorry guys, everybody's looking like, who's talking? Lust is very much directed by your feelings. So a lot of times you're moved by how you feel. I remember telling my daughter when she was coming out of elementary school into middle school, and you know, in middle school, that's when you really start to, you kind of, boys are still a little icky, but then they become kind of cute, you know what I mean? And then by the time you get to ninth grade, it's like, it's, it's boy mania, right? Yeah. Or girl mania, whatever. But I remember telling my daughter, like, you think you like this one boy, but you're gonna see another boy who looks cute and smells good, and then when you get in their presence, you'll feel an attraction or you'll feel a sensation, we can go deeper, girls, in PGR. But I'm just saying, you, there's, your body reacts to what you see and what you smell, like to the senses, right? But you don't have to respond to everything your body is sensationalizing, if that makes sense. Clap on time if that makes sense. Self-control. So just being, being aware that just because you feel something doesn't mean you have to respond. Everything doesn't require a response. I'm a married woman right now. I've been married for, it'll be 20 years next month. Thank you. We have to practice, even as married people, we still have to practice self-control. I'm not blind. My nose ain't stopped up. I see men that look good. Hold up now. <clears throat> but you the one. You hey, the one, hey, baby. You, yeah, you, you, better, one. you better make it plain, girl. <laughs> you feel. You the one. You the one. Make it plain, baby. <laughs> but I'm saying, like, it, it, if I were to be moved by what my senses Facts. told me, then I'd be sleeping with everything that I thought was fine walking. Facts. So I'm just, I'm saying that as a visual because as a young person, when you're walking through life, it's like, it's hard to do it. It's only hard when you're not, when you're nursing at the conception stage, like Pastor Anthony was saying when he showed you that. All those little things that you do when you tiptoe around, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, y'all kissing and then the kissing becomes little slow pecs and then the slow pecs become long drawn out and then we're not just kissing here, we're kissing in other places and we're going to get pretty. We're going to get into this series. You understand? Because it's, it's a real thing. Yeah. All I'm saying is it starts with if I don't take or use self-control at the conception stage, then everything that my senses sense, I will respond to it. And I'm telling you, you have the power to not respond that way. It just requires some discipline and self-control. Yeah. Facts. Make some noise. Pass the When we were doing the renovations in here, one, do you, do, you, do you guys like the renovations that we did in this building? Praise God, man. We got new cameras. We got new equipment. We got new lights. We got new sound. We got new screens. But one of the reasons that I wanted us to go over to the fellowship hall is because I needed you guys to experience the presence of God without all these things. And we did several times. And it wasn't about the location. It was about you choosing him. And the same way you chose him over there is the same way you choose him each and every place you go, through every situation in life. You need Jesus. Stand to your feet. Let's uh, turn the lights in the audience down. I want you guys to 
let's, man, I ain't no singer, but I love Jesus. You are holy, holy, are you Lord God Almighty, worthy is the Lamb, worthy is the Lamb, you are holy, holy. Worthy is the Lamb, you say, you are holy, say holy, holy, are you Lord God, are you Lord God, almighty, worthy is the Lamb, you say, worthy is the Lamb, come on, you say, say, worthy is the Lamb. You are holy, say, you are holy, holy, say, holy, are you Lord God, are you Lord God, almighty, so we say, worthy is the Lamb, worthy is the Lamb. Let's say it again. Say, you are holy, holy, holy. We declare, are you, are you Lord God Almighty? We say, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. We say, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Come on. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb, we say. Worthy is the Lamb. Come on, let's say it together. Worthy is. Worthy is the Lamb. Say, holy is the Lamb, we say. Holy is the Lamb. Holy is the Lamb. Say, holy is the Lamb. Holy is the Lamb. Yes, sir. Holy is the Lamb. Now say, worthy is the Lamb, we say. Worthy is the Lamb. We live and we say worthy, worthy is the Lamb. We lift our voice, we say worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb, say. Worthy is the Lamb. Now can we say holy is the Lamb, say. Holy is the Lamb. Holy is the Lamb, we say. Holy is the Lamb. Holy is the Lamb, we say. Holy is the Lamb. Holy is the Lamb. Holy is the Lamb. Listen, there's going to be times when it seems hard to choose God. Sometimes you've got to create this type of atmosphere in the middle of the restroom, in the middle of the locker room, uh, on your way to school, in the car, in the middle of that argument when you seem to be misunderstood by your parents and you're going back and forth. They're screaming, you're screaming. It's just chaotic. Sometimes you need to just go, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb, we say, worthy is the Lamb. Come on, let's lift our hands and sing it together. Worthy is the Lamb. Lift your hands to Jesus, come, come on. Just tell God, come on. say, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, you're worthy. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb, we say. Worthy is the Lamb. Come on, let's sing to him, say, worthy, say. Worthy is the Lamb. I give you everything because you're worthy. worthy is the I give you everything because you're worthy. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Say, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is Now let's say it. Say, holy is the Lamb. We say, holy is the Lamb. We join with one voice, with one sound of Holy worship. Holy is the Lamb. 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 Now, right where you.
you are, can you just worship God in your own way? Come on, you can say, Lord, I love you. Lord, I honor you. Lord, I adore you because you're holy. You're holy. You're worthy. We worship you, Jesus. We give you everything, Jesus. It's all about you. You're holy. You're holy. You're worthy. You're worthy. Yes, you are. So we say, worthy is the Lamb. We say, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Yeah. Worthy is the Lamb. We say, holy is the Lamb. Holy is the Lamb. Holy is the Lamb. Holy is the Lamb. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, just take a moment to worship him right here in your own way. Come on, just take a moment to worship him. Let's focus on him in this moment. Come on, and right where you are, just worship him in your own way. Say, Lord, I love you. I bless you. I honor you. I give you everything in this moment. God, I choose you above everything else. I give you all of me. I give you my heart. I give you my mind. I give you all of me, God. It all belongs to you. Father, we just take this time to just indulge in your presence right now, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you are in this place, God. We invite you into this place, Lord, and we just ask that you will do what needs to be done in our hearts, Lord. We thank you for that powerful word that Pastor Anthony preached, Lord, to help us to understand the difference between love and lust, to understand what love really is. I know in my own life I've learned that love is it's not circumstantial, it's not based on what I can do, but I know that lust is circumstantial. It's always trying to gain something for myself, even if I don't realize that's what I'm doing subconsciously, Lord. In my own life, I've learned that a powerful tool that Satan will try to use against us is the tool of compromise, to lead you into deception, to think that this is really what you want, to think that's really what you want to do. But in reality, you don't want to do those things. In reality, you don't feel that same desire. So God, we just want to take this moment to just let you be the light. Let you be the ruler in our hearts, God, to be the umpire of peace in our hearts, Lord, that we have. And we just ask, Lord, that you just show us, Lord, show us what true love is. Allow us to receive your love, Lord. We can't love if we don't know what love is. So we just ask that you please show us, reveal to us, let our spiritual ears hear, let our hearts receive everything that was spoken that we don't, we know that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, but let us also meditate on that word, that we meditate on your love, that we meditate on who you are, that we meditate on your identity because our identity is found in your love that you have for us, Lord God. So right now we just wanna take this moment, just exalt you and help us to understand that we don't have to compromise, that we don't have to be a part of the world. We don't have to allow ourselves to fall short to the social norms and values that social media is pushing on us and these trends and and all these things that is not who we really are, Lord God. But let us just be comforted in the fact that we are God's beloved. That is who we are. And we receive that and we understand that to be true in our lives. So right now, God, we just wanna take this moment If there's anyone out there that you just feel like you and God have not been on the same frequency or if you've never been able to really know Jesus for yourself and you want to you want to experience that love you want that love and not that lust I want you to come to this altar right now this this sanctuary it says that we are the offering let us bring ourselves as an offering let us bring our own bodies to be a place where we can receive that love of God so that we can have eternity with Christ, so that we can have a place where we can just be ourselves, which is in God. If you feel like you've been kind of distanced from God lately, as I said earlier, and you just want to rededicate your faith, you just want to rededicate, you want to be a certain that 
the love you have for God is true, then I want you to come down to this altar. If you want to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, if you want to be able to just feel the presence of God deeper to with the evidence of speaking in tongues, man, I can tell you in my own life, praying in tongues is probably the most powerful thing you can do as a believer in Christ, especially when you're trying to overcome this lust. If you just get down and you just start praying in the Spirit, you'll feel that thought leave. Because what God has told me is that temptation is only a thought. If I can overcome that thought, the temptation will pass. But the problem is, like Pastor Anthony said, you get stuck in that moment. So if you just start praying, if you start praying in the Spirit and allow yourself to move, that thought will, this too shall pass, praise God. And lastly but not least, if you feel like this is your brook, this is the place where you receive nourishment and you want to become a member of this church, if you want to become a member of WCYE, then I want you to come down to this altar as well. So I've given you four things that you can do. Salvation, rededicate your life to Christ, or rededicate your faith, receive baptism of the Holy Spirit, and become a member of WCYE and become a member of World Changers. If you'd like to do any of those things, I would like ask you to please come down to this altar right now. Worthy is the Lord. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. You're holy. Say, you are holy. Come on, let's tell him holy. Say, holy. Are you Lord God? together holy is holy is the lamb worthy is the lamb we say worthy is the lamb yeah worthy is the lamb say worthy is the lamb holy is the lamb say righteous is the lamb righteous is the lamb righteous is the lamb say righteous is the lamb righteous is the lamb righteous is the lamb God, we thank you for these, your precious sheep, Lord. We thank you for praise. We thank you for everything that you're doing and what you did in this moment, God, as we come to a close, God. We thank you, Lord, for your peace, Lord, that is with us even as we leave this place, Lord, that in your glory we have majesty, dominion, and power, Lord, to go out and do the great works that you've called us to do. So, Lord, we just pray right now that everywhere the soles of our feet tread upon, you have given it to us, you have given us the authority, and you have shown us that we can receive that love today, and we walk away with knowing that today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.